Hello my sweet friends and welcome to DIY with Nadia. My tiny little sidekick over here is little Simba and today we are going to talk about 12 methods of using 10 inch deco mesh to make your beautiful wreaths or wreath bases. To see the full video of any of the wreaths that I'm going to show you, I'm going to attach their little links in the description box below so you can click and watch that particular wreath. Without further ado, let's get started on the 12 gorgeous wreath bases using 10 inch deco mesh. To get started, I'm grabbing my deco mesh and I'm going to be cutting both of my deco mesh rolls into 15 inch strips. Now that my deco mesh is cut up, I'm going to grab my pipe cleaners and cut these in half. Then I'm going to make a little V with the pipe cleaners just like this. This is just to help me grab them. The way this method is zero fray is because we're going to make little bows and bring the endings together. So what I'm going to do, I have my little strip and I'm just going to walk it out until it's overlapping about one and a half inches. Pinch on both sides and then I'm going to bring it vertically and just lay it down with the overlapping in the center. On top right here, I'm going to just hold that in place with my thumb. I'm going to find the middle or somewhere in here just to kind of hold the overlapping in place. From the bottom, I'm just going to start walking it up. It's quick, it's easy, look at that. I just brought the bow together. Now I'm going to flip it over. This is the smooth end that was touching the table. I'm going to bring my pipe cleaner right around the center. And in the back, I'm going to give it two to three nice tight twists. And you have a bow. All our fraying is contained by the pipe cleaner. One side is right here and it's nice and tight. The other side is actually inside the bow. And that's it. You have a little bow that's zero fray and it's going to make for a beautiful wreath. Let's make another bow. We're going to make this one a little quicker. We're just going to overlap, pinch on both sides, I'm going to place it on the table just like this. With one hand, I'm going to hold at the top and about the center with my thumb. And I'm just going to start bringing the bow together from the bottom, working my way up as quick as that, grabbing my pipe cleaner, two to three tight twists in the back, and your bow is done zero fray. Now I'm just going to continue making all my bows and I'll be right back. My bows are all made and now I'm ready to start putting them on the wreath form. I suggest using rows either two or three and I will be putting mine today on row two. A good tip is to kind of work from the back. So this is the top of the wreath. This is the bottom where it's swinging in kind of. And of course, Leo is here supervising, making sure my wreath is coming out nicely. And I'm just going to start adding my bows onto row two. And I'm going to do eight bows per section. Grabbing the next one, same thing, row two, giving it a few twists in the back, cutting off about an inch from the actual connection, folding in half and folding back. I'm done with one section. I have eight in here, but to be honest, if you have seven in here, it's going to be enough because look how full this section is. And don't forget the other sides are going to actually squeeze it in a little bit more. And you have this beautiful wreath that is zero fray and it's going to last for years. I have been making wreaths using this method for quite a while now. And I love the fact that year after year, I come back and I hang up the same wreaths with zero fray. It is so nice. I'm just going to continue putting on my bows and go all the way around. Our wreath is all done. Look how compact it is. And there's no fraying, absolutely no fraying. This is what it looks like in the back. You can cover this with whatever you want if you're going to sell it. But on here, you can maybe add some ribbon bundles, whatever you want. The 
The Dollar Tree Reform is divided into six sections. In each section, I'm going to have five bundles of the curls. In your bundles, you can have anywhere from a two to five curls. And if you're going to do four curl bundles, you're probably going to end up doing four per section because it's a lot fuller. Since we're using three rolls of deco mesh in our bundles, we're going to have five per section, which means five times six is 30. And I'm going to be cutting my pipe cleaners in half. So I grabbed 15 pipe cleaners for this. After cutting them in half, I'm going to make a little V. This is just something I do so it's easier to grab and put it straight onto my bundle. And I'm going to put it on the side. For the curly wreath, you're going to cut your deco mesh into 10 inch strips. And I'm going to be using a rotary cutter to cut all my deco mesh. You can cut these separately or you can just layer them to make your job a little bit quicker. My edges are so nice, I don't even have to cut a section out to straighten everything out. Since I'm cutting them all together, I know that I'm going to need 30 sets of my little bundles. This is how I store my deco mesh little bundles as I'm cutting them. I think this is very important to show you. This is actually just a laundry basket. But all my deco mesh is in separate little bundles. It's not fraying. I'm not stressing the deco mesh out any more than I have to. And I think this is a very important part of the actual wreath making process because it's going to affect your overall finishing look. Now it's time to start making our curls. All I'm going to use is this clip from the Dollar Tree. These come in a set of two. You can use a clothespin, whatever you have on hand, or you can just hold it in your hand. And then of course, our pipe cleaners that were cut in half. All I'm going to do here is let my deco mesh curl naturally. And I don't like to curl them too tight because I want a big floofy wreath. And I'm just going to clip it. Let's curl this next one. And I like to crisscross them. And then of course our last one. Now that I have my three curls, grabbing my pipe cleaner, and I'm just going to make it as tight as possible. Two twists. Your curl doesn't have to be perfect because there's going to be a lot of other curls next to it. And so now it's time to either, I don't know, whatever you do, put on music, watch whatever show or a movie, and just relax. This is therapy for me. I love doing this. And just let your deco mesh roll naturally and make your little curls. You can also add a little ribbon to it, or maybe you want to add some mesh tubing. I'm not going to be adding mesh tubing, but you can if you would like. And here we go. Just keep on adding them. When you got the three, get your pipe cleaner and tighten your little curl. Two twists in the back. And there you go. Next thing you know, you're going to have a gorgeous curly wreath. And as you can see, I'm not going in any order in particular. I mix and match them, whether it's the white on the outside, white on the inside, maybe red on the inside. It really doesn't matter. You want to kind of play around and do different sets, I guess, because you want the curls to be evened out on the actual wreath form. So there's really no particular order that I'm going in, just making my bundles. Now it's time to put our curl bundles onto our wreath form, and we're going to put five of these in each section. I'm going to be using the two middle rows, and our pipe cleaners should be more than enough to go around both of these and make a few twists. To make it nice and neat, we're going to fold in half and fold back. And there you go, nice and neat. Next one. And I like working from the back because that's where you're going to be attaching. So very simple, both rows. And I'm just going to twist my little bundle in place. And then I'm going to fold and fold back. One, two, three, four, five. Look at this, that's only one section. And don't forget, as we fill this in, 
this is going to get pushed up and it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful full wreath. If you see that there's a lot of one color, for example, like this had a lot of this mint here, I'm just going to push some white through, just kind of move it around. There you go. You don't have to do this. You could do this at the end, but I like to make sure that everything is just nice and even. There's no red in this section. There you go. Now there is. And now I'm just going to go all the way around five bundles per section. Look at how absolutely full this wreath is. So beautiful. And here it is from the back, five of these bundles in each section. It's so beautiful. going to be using the 18 pipe cleaner method to attach to my wreath form so we're going to do this one section at a time so if you are new to wreath making no big deal you can definitely do this the 14 inch wreath form has six sections in each section we're going to put three pipe cleaners first pipe cleaner is going to get attached on row one and two right there in the center I'm going to bring it together a nice twist or two and then i'm going to face the pipe cleaner towards the inside this next one is going to go to the side of the center one and i'm just going to fold it in half two twists and we're going to fold it down to the outside side and the third one is going to go on the opposite side of the center one same thing we're going to fold it in half two twists and fold it out I'm going to repeat the same process going all the way around this is what your wreath form should look like at this point six pipe cleaners on the inside 12 on the outside for a ruffle wreath I usually cut my deco mesh into 30 inch strips and because both of our rolls are 10 yards in length that usually gives me 12 strips per roll i decided to cut my deco mesh into 40 inch strips that way i get nine out of this one nine out of this one which makes it 18 like we had the 18 pipe cleaners and the extra 10 inches that i'm going to add to our ruffles is just going to make the wreath fuller now let's talk about the options with our white deco mesh my white deco mesh does have the little stripes just like this one does it's 10 yards in length and if you make curls with this one cutting them at 10 inches in length you're going to have enough to make 36 curls which means you could put two curls per pipe cleaner i thought that would be just a little too much because i do want some white in it but i don't want the white to overwhelm the prettiness of this deco mesh so i decided to use half of this roll and just do 18 pieces that way we have a nice balance a little bit of white popping out the red the blue i mean what's the worst that can happen if i feel like it's not enough i cut the rest of it up no big deal my cutting mat is 24 inches in length plus it has a half inch on the side so what you're going to need is 16 more inches and i'm just going to start here at the beginning mark with a pencil where my line ends and then we're ready to cut i've always been so conservative with my deco mesh i don't think i've ever done 40 inch strips but what are you going to do when you have a little piece left over that's this specific you're going to end up pitching it anyway so the way i look at it use it up make that wreath fuller and as you see i'm just rolling it up and i'm going to put it to the side and now the same thing with the red deco mesh this wreath is going to be so full so beautiful because of this edging I cannot wait to see how it turns out same thing 40 inch strips and you should get nine at 40 inches or if you're cutting at 30 inches you're going to get 12 getting ready to cut my white deco mesh and this one I'm going to do 10 inch strips and I'm going to need 18 of them I wanted to quickly show you how I store my deco mesh since I did cut three rolls or two and a half really. All my red and blue is right here and they're curled up but the ones that are short, the 10 inch ones, I literally just cut them and throw them in because I do not want to touch the edges if I can help it. The more you touch the edges, the more you create the deco mesh. Since we have two different colors for our ruffles, I'm going to attach them every other pipe cleaner. 
on the inside and also on the outside. Now it's time to grab our clamp. Then I'm going to grab our beautiful white piece of deco mesh and I'm going to just curl it. We're going to make a little curl and I try to make sure that the center of our curl is about one inch, just like that. Now I'm going to clamp it, grab one of my ruffles, find the center. And if you have deco mesh that you can tell where the center is, it's really easy if you do not then use your board. Centering my deco mesh on my board, I'm going to focus on my little square and I'm just going to go down the square. I'm going to make a little fold at the end and bring it back. I forgot to mention that in the beginning, I always do a little fold. Let's open up my first pipe cleaner, put that in and then grab my curl, put that in the center. A few twists in the middle. As far as the pipe cleaners, we're going to leave them alone for now and move on to our next ruffle. First things first, let's make our curl. Now let's grab our red deco mesh. I'm going to start by folding right at the edge. Let's center it on our cutting board and just start bringing it in. When you get to the end, same thing, we're going to fold at the end and bring it in. This is a big, big ruffle, so do make sure you are centered. And if you're off a little bit, that's okay. Just go on the sides and just make sure you're okay. I seem to be actually okay. And then we're going to take our little curl, work it in between the actual folds. We're going to put that on the next pipe cleaner. Because the ruffles are so poofy, I use two fingers and bring the ruffles down so it's not as poofy because we have a lot of ruffles. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited about this wreath. This is going to be so much fun. What do you guys think? This is only the inside row. This is six bundles. We still have all the sides to do. And now you can see why it's so important to put those pipe cleaners to the outside it's easy to grab them, to find them, and to attach. Uh, let's go and make more ruffles. Same thing with these pipe cleaners. I'm going to leave them on for now and continue making a ruffle still every other color. Oh my goodness, besides being super, super pretty, it is so floofy. It's not even fluffy at this point. It is so beautiful and it measures at about six and a half inches in height. This thing is unbelievable. using some silver pipe cleaners because I know they're not gonna show, but I think I need to go shopping again. I need some holiday pipe cleaners. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put six pipe cleaners, just like we usually start on row one and two. We're going to put that right in the middle and face it towards the inside. I'm trying to pull just a tiny bit when I do this to make sure that it stays in place because hot glue doesn't always hold it in place, I'll have to admit, especially the pipe cleaners that have foil on it instead of that fuzzy stuff. What we want to do on the outside row is put our pipe cleaners on row three and I'm going to put them on the intersection right here so they go in between and it's going to kind of zigzag and it's going to balance out, it's going to be beautiful. If you have the tendency of using two rows what you can do is you can go from one side to the other from row three to row two and when you bring your pipe cleaner together make sure you twist on row three because we do want that deco mesh pancake to be towards the outside of our wreath form and I'm going to do the same thing right here I'm going to go in from one side to the next side of the intersection because we want to make sure this is going to be set in place and not go anywhere but I am making sure that I'm tightening it up on row three 
and that's it our reform is ready now let's get started with our deco mesh i moved my mat over a little bit so i can add a ruler at the end because we are going to need 30 inch strips as far as my ruler i'm going to take it out until i see five and a half inches because i'm going to have one two three four five and this is going to be six half of it on the mat half on the ruler plus the 24 i have here hence 30 inches i'm just going to even out the edge here as i said i'm going to be cutting my deco mesh into 30 inch strips and we are going to need 12 of these when I cut each of the strips, I just roll it naturally and put it to the side. This is going to prevent any unnecessary fraying. So now we're going to basically make a ruffle. I'm going to fold about half an inch or to an inch on one side. And I usually like to use deco mesh that you can clearly see where the center is because this is a long piece of deco mesh. So I'm going to start collecting right there on the brown line. Going to fold in the back and I have my beautiful ruffle. How pretty is that? I'm going to start on the outside because it kind of comes high. I'm going to just push it down with my fingers and then twist. Two nice twists. And now let's work on our ruffle. What I like to do is I like to take one of the sides and where it's folded, I'm going to overlap it and go into one of the grooves. Then I'm going to grab kitty corner from this side, this end right here, and I'm going to do the same thing. By doing this overlapping, I'm doing two things. Number one, I'm making sure my pancake is continuous. And number two, I'm making sure that the fraying is staying in check and my ends are not just, you know, wishy-washy all over. So now I'm going to grab my next one and I'm going to do the same thing first working on the outside row. Grabbing my next deco mesh strip, I'm going to fold it and I'm going to gather it right in the center on the brown line, folding about an inch in the back and bringing it together. This particular wreath, what I do is I'll do the outside row, just like you see, then I also do the ribbon for it, and then I put the deco mesh on for the inside row because it's going to be overlapping. If you do all the ribbon at the end, you're just going to end up moving the deco mesh here and there, and I don't like disturbing deco mesh when it's in place. So I'm going to put this on the side for now, and we are going to prepare our ribbon. The one and a half inch ribbon that I'm going to be using, I already showed you this one, and this one is wired, but I decided to add this ribbon. This burlap ribbon is two and a half inches in width and it's 30 feet, so 10 yards. Nice. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it into 12 inch strips. I'm going to need 12 pieces of this burlap ribbon. In case you're wondering why I'm zigzagging instead of wrapping it around a 12 inch ruler or something. And that is because I like to do the uh, dovetails along with cutting the ribbon at the same time. So let me cut that off. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to grab these together and I'm doing the dovetails and cutting the ribbon at the same time. Just like that. Fold it in half. Look at that. I love doing this. Next, I'm going to do the pumpkin ribbon. I'm going to do 12 inch strips and we're going to need 12 of them. Same thing with this ribbon. We're just going to fold it in half at the endings. And since this one's much thinner, I'm just grabbing two at a time and cutting my dovetails. For this gorgeous orange ribbon, I'm going to cut it into 22 inch strips and we're only going to need six of these. And just so you know, this glittery ribbon is a little bit on a softer side. You can see right here versus this one that's thick. And that's going to help us because we are going to be making sweet little bows with this ribbon. Let's review our ribbon. Our burlap two and a half inch ribbon, 12 inches, and you're going to need 12 of these. Same thing with our one and a half pumpkin ribbon. 12 inches and we're going to need 12 of them and then the orange we're only going to need six of these and we're cutting them at 22 inches let's take care of the ribbon that's going on the outside i'm going to grab the burlap ribbon plus the little pumpkin ribbon how cute are these then i'm going to fold to find my center gather in the center and now i'm going to put it on the pipe cleaner, the pipe cleaner. let's make another one 
I'm just layering both of these. Then I'm going to find my center. And then as I'm bringing it together with my thumbs, I'm pushing it up. With these fingers, I'm pushing it down. And that way you have this kind of tail going on. Let's put this on our ruffle. And after I twist it in place, I'm going to twist about an inch up. Cut the rest off with my wire cutters. Fold this in half and fold it back. Now that my outside row is done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my pipe cleaners and bring all six of them up, making sure you come up between the actual deco mesh pieces. Now I'm going to continue doing what we did on the outside row, which is a fold about an inch or half an inch and start gathering our ruffle. Grabbing one of our pipe cleaners, we're going to attach on top and then I'm going to do the same thing with the overlapping. As you can see, my silver pipe cleaners are going to be hidden behind the ruffles. All our deco mesh is on. Next, I'm going to grab the burlap and our pumpkin and we're going to do the exact same thing we did on the outside where we just overlap the two folded in half and then we're going to bring it together same thing we're going to push with our thumbs up with these fingers down so we have this beautiful tail and we're going to start adding these to the center and we're going to leave the pipe cleaners in place we're not going to cut them off yet this is what I have so far so we have the outside ribbon on the inside ribbon on but now we still need to use up our orange one. To make our bows, I'm going to be using my mat because I want my tails to be three and a half inches. So I have my square, which is four inches. And what I'm going to do is at the one, two, three and a half mark, that is where I'm going to place my tail. Now I'm going to make an awareness ribbon just like that. And I'm going to bring this one to the other side. So we're going to be in the middle of this square right here. And all I'm going to do is hold right here in the middle. That's just basically how I measure to make sure my tails are the same. Holding it right here in the center, we're going to find the center of our loop and bring it down. And we have a perfect bow. We're going to just gather it just like this. I'm going to place it in the center of our ribbon and we're only doing this to the top. Now we're going to twist our pipe cleaner, cut about an inch off from the center of the bow, fold it in half and fold it back. We're going to cover the center of the bow, but look how perfect this sweet little bow comes out to be. And it was so easy. So same thing, we just need to measure three and a half inches. This is how I do it. I put in my little square, then I'm going to do this awareness ribbon thing and put it on the other side of the square. So one, two, three and a half. Hold it in the middle because we need to measure the center. Bring it to the center and just bring the ribbon together. That's it, look how cute this is. I'm going to continue doing this going all the way around on the top row. To bring out the white in the pumpkin ribbon right here, I'm going to grab these vase fillers and pick three of the big white ones. Next, I'm just going to take the white ones and cut them in half. I actually like using a letter opener. I'm not worried about cutting myself and it works really, really well. It cuts this like butter. And all I'm going to do is a little bit of hot glue and hot glue it to the center. This is going to cover that silver pipe cleaner I've been using and it's going to give it a really pretty pop of white. You can definitely leave the wreath like this if that is what you want, but look how adorable it is with these sweet little bows. I absolutely love how this turned out. Our deco mesh. I'm just going to use a little basket like I usually do and what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlay them together just so it's quicker to cut and I'm going to be needing 15 strips of each color. I'm going to have 30 total and I'm going to be cutting my deco mesh into 20 inch strips. 
and then just rolling it and putting it to the side. Next, we're going to cut the ribbon. I'm going to be cutting each of the ribbon at 12 inches, and we're going to need 15 strips of each ribbon. As always, I'm going to zigzag until I get my 15 strips, and then I'm going to cut dovetails on the ends. I got my 15 strips, and now I'm just going to go on the ends, fold in half, and make my little triangle. There you go. Same thing with the two and a half inch ribbon. We're going to do 15 strips at 12 inches each. Now it's time to prepare our pipe cleaners. They're just 12 inch pipe cleaners that I'm going to fold in half and just cut them right there. And as always, I'm going to fold them in a little V so they're ready to go as we need them. Now it's time to make our cruffles or ruffles. And the way we're going to attach them to our wreath form is we're going to do five per section. And since we have green and white, what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to continue get going every other green, white, green, white, all the way around. As far as our ribbon bundles, we also are going to attach them every other. So just pick whichever deco mesh would look better with the ribbon. I think the ribbon will stand out really nicely against the white so when I'm attaching the white cruffles I'm also going to attach the ribbon and then the green ones are going to be by themselves as always we're working around Leo over here you're also going to need some kind of a clamp the way I'm going to lay my deco mesh is it's going to roll from the table meaning it's curling up that way we can just do a quick few curls so maybe one two and then three Clamp in the center, push it back. Now we're going to do the same thing on this side. One, two, three, and bring it together in the middle. By the way, both of my deco mesh rolls are from Hobby Lobby. Now I'm just grabbing my pipe cleaner, I'm going to twist it once or twice and put it right on my wreath form. And I'm going to put it around two of the center rings. Here I'm going to just make it tight and then fold over. So our green one is on, now the white one. Same thing, rolling away from the table. We're going to do two to three rolls. Clamp, let's do the other side and bring it together. On top of the white one, I'm going to put one of these and one of these. Before I put it on, I'm going to fold it in half, find my center, then bring it together in the center and put it straight over just like this. Now we have our pipe cleaner right on there. Look how nice that was. I like putting it in a V. Now we're going to just do nice tight twist or two, just like that. Look how pretty this is and attach it next to my green one. You can definitely prepare all of these and then put them on the wreath form or just like I'm doing, just do one at a time. Take your time, watch whatever you're watching or listen to the music and look at that. Now another green one. Now the white. And if you don't have one of these clips that I'm using, that's not a big deal. Use a clothespin. Use whatever you have just to grab it and keep it in place. You're going to need this obviously for just a few seconds. So definitely use whatever you have on hand. Don't go out and buy one of these. You really don't have to. I'm just folding in half, making sure I got my center. There you go. And I'm just bringing it together and right on top. I'm really loving the color combo so far. It's so pretty. The first section is done and it's only five of the cruffles. And since we started with the green, ended with the green, the next one we're going to start with the white, end with the white, and at the end, it's going to balance out really, really nicely. So here we go. I'm just going to continue making these cruffles. And as I said, the white is going to have the ribbon attached and the green is going to be as is. I know I'm kind of doing everything one-handed, but if you need a little bit of help with the ribbon, just bring your cruffle together, put it on the side, then do your ribbon, and it just might be a little easier for you. There you go, bring it together. Same thing, there you go. This may be a little easier. Just use your clip to your advantage. As you can see, I have five 
in each section going all the way around and they are connected on rows two and three the two middle rows that is how each of the bundles are attached This is going to be easy, I promise. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put one pipe cleaner on the inside of each section. This ring form has six sections. So one right here. For more stability, I'm going to be using two rings to put my pipe cleaners on the wreath form. The next six silver pipe cleaners, I'm going to put on the intersection right here on rows three and four. So just like that and two twists and I'm just going to go to each intersection and do the same thing and as you can see I'm laying these flat one set on rows one and two in the middle and then the other set of six on the outside on the intersection where the crossbars are or the little dividers on the wreath form next I'm coming in with the gold ones and the gold ones I'm not going to lay them down I'm going to point them up because we're going to start with these so I'm just going to literally go complete opposite so if this one's here I'm going to just put one on the other side of it that's it and I'm putting them on row three and four this next one right on the intersection but on row one and two Basically, you just want two rows of these and it's going to be every other. If one's at the bottom, one's going to be at the top. If one's at the top, we're going to put one at the bottom. I know it seems like it's a lot of pipe cleaners, but there's not. It's just every other going along row one and two and then row three and four. I'm going to start with this blue one. I'm going to gather about one and a half inches. And it really doesn't matter if you start on the outside or in the inside, you are going to be zigzagging all the way around. First things first, we're going to put it on there, give it two good twists. And of course, because this is a beginning one, I'm going to grab a zip tie and I'm going to go about half an inch to an inch off of this connection. And I'm going to zip tie it. It's going to straighten it out. As far as poofs, you want them to be anywhere from 8 to 10 inches. And I'm just going to measure off my 10 inches. My 10 inches is this pink square right here. And as soon as I get my 10 inches, I'm going to go to this next one. I'm going to close it in. I can put this away later. It depends on what I want to do as far as decoration. So you can either cut it off if you know you're not going to use it or keep it if you're not sure if you want to add ribbon to that part. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to be adding the ribbon. So I decided just to leave it in. But I do like to poof it out as I'm going along just because it makes things a little bit easier. And that's it. We are just going to go in a zigzag with the blue from row three, four to one, two, from this one to this one, from this one to this one. Let me know how you like this method. As far as I know, this method was developed by Brenda from Busy Bees. Let me know how you like this because it's kind of fun. You can definitely play with two different ribbon or with one. And we're going to see how fluffy it's going to be. And it's just going to be a beautiful wreath. So I'm going to continue zigzagging with my 10 inch loops and just hopping along from gold pipe cleaner to gold pipe cleaner I completed my circle going all the way around with the blue and here is where we started you can see the zip tie right here and I'm going to cut about two inches right here and I'm going to go in the back to row three right here using another zip tie I'm going to lock that in place just like that now the pink going to collect it now I'm going to go towards the silver one same thing two ties I'm going to grab a pipe cleaner and lock that in just like that now I'm going to do the same thing we're going to measure off 10 inches and I'm going to find my next silver one. And since I already have them nice and flat, it's going to be easy to find them. Two twists and I'm going to point them up and just open up as you go along. And yes, that's Leo right there. I'm trying to twist the blue so it doesn't have bulks of pink pink or blue blue. And how gorgeous is this? I know making a mermaid wreath here 
but if you look at it with the pink and the blues you could have probably guessed that I could have been making a baby shower wreath and you can definitely make one of these for a baby shower or for a reveal party look at this look how fun this would be for a reveal party it's pink and blue and just decorate it with some baby stuff with some favors I don't know you know they have like those little bottles and stuff or just do polka dots with some vase fillers that would be cute too this method is super fun if you want to do two colors another good idea is Christmas with red and green that would look cute too so maybe you'll see that on this channel who knows you never know I'm on my last loop right here going back to where we started two twists and then same thing I'm going to grab this tail and put it behind this first loop and zip tie it on row three right here just like that and at the end you should have a wreath that looks something like this before decor you have two colors nicely incorporated it is so pretty First thing you're going to need is 18 pipe cleaners. What we're going to do is we're going to put one pipe cleaner on rows one and two. I count from inside out. So on row one and two, we are going to put one pipe cleaner right there in the middle of one of the sections. And I'm going to face it in just like this. Next, I'm going to put two pipe cleaners on rows three and four, and I tend to tie it on row three or bring it together I guess on row three and these I'm going to face out I lay my pipe cleaners out this way so it's easier to find them when we're putting the deco mesh on and just like this we have one in the center two on both sides of the pipe cleaner so you're going to have six on the inside and each of the sections and 12 on the outside because we're putting two pipe cleaners per section on the outside two rows and that's it I'm going to continue doing this going all the way around our base is all done all our pipe cleaners are on and before I get started on my deco mesh I'm going to explain how I'm going to put it on this is going to be a standard poof method wreath if I were to attach my deco mesh right here on this pipe cleaner what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure measure out 10 inches and do 10 inch poofs going from section to section on my first row right here when I'm done going all the way around I'm going to complete the loop by overlapping it right here where we started and then instead of going to this next one right here we're going to jump to the next section not in the same section so we're going to jump in the next section and starting here we're going to do 10 inch loops completing the circle going all the way around then coming back to where we started and then we're going to attach it with a zip tie just like we're going to attach a zip tie where we're starting for this method you can either use a 21 inch deco mesh or you can use 10 inch mesh you can either use six inch mesh just kind of layer it to make that full effect you only need five yards for this method unfortunately I can't just unroll one roll and then double it it's just going to get messy so I'm just going to use two of these rolls and then I can definitely use them up in a different wreath using either the ruffle method or actually you can make two wreaths like this with this same two rolls first things first I'm going to just put my rolls of deco mesh right on top of each other going about an inch and a half to two inches in I'm going to gather after I gathered I'm going to attach it to our first place right here two twists nice and tight then grabbing a zip tie I'm going to go off our little connection here about half an inch to an inch and just zip tie it right there as you can see after you do that this little tail just straighten out and you have an extra secure connection 
for your wreath. Let me use my little pliers. And by the way, these pliers are on my Amazon store and also in the description box on my daily supplies because I use it all the time. Now we can get started on our 10 inch loops. My 10 inches is right here on this light square and I'm just going to keep it tight and measure off my 10 inches and attach it to the next pipe cleaner. I'm going to push all of this down so I have a nice spoof, two twists, and I'm going to face the pipe cleaners up so I can find them if I need them later. Another 10 inches, next pipe cleaner, and we're just going to bring all this poof down, all the deco mesh, bring it down, two nice tight twists, and then point our pipe cleaners up. If you're going to do something where you know you're not going to need to attach a ribbon or maybe you're just going to hot glue something over here like an ornament or something like that, then you just take care of this. Either you bring these guys back and tie it back or you cut it about an inch from the connection twist it and then fold and loop back right here so it's out of the way. I have my six poofs on the inside, came all the way around. Here's where we started. Here's my zip tie and here's where we're ending in our first row. And then the section that we're in, we're going to skip it, move on to this next section to the first pipe cleaner there. Measure out our 10 inches and attach it to the zip tie. Now I'm just going to go along and measure off my 10 inches and keep on going. I got my last loop right here and I'm going to cut it off about two inches from where I'm holding it. Then attach it to this pipe cleaner right here. This is where we started that second row. And I'm going to kind of face it back. After I give two tight twists, I'm going to come in with a zip tie. Let me just show you from the back here. And I'm going to zip tie the tail right here about an inch or half an inch away from the pipe cleaner where we just made that last connection. So after I'm done tying it, use my little clippers and just clip off the end. If you clipped it off at the top, make sure to bend it back so it's not scratching any walls. Now I'm just going to go ahead and fluff out my wreath right here. So basically, I'm going to just separate my deco mesh and just poof it out. Go along and poof all of them out. I'm going to first take care of this inner row and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of all the pipe cleaners because I'm not going to be using them in this first row. I'm just going to do a few twists then cut about an inch from the connection right here at the pipe cleaner. Then I'm going to fold this piece in half and fold it back. That's it and I'm going to go around doing that to all the pipe cleaners. This wreath form consists of six sections. In each section, we're going to have three pipe cleaners. We're just going to make it easy on ourselves. On row one and two, I'm going to attach one pipe cleaner, give it two twists, and I'm folding it towards the inside of the wreath form, just like this. Then I'm going to take the next two, and I'm going to attach them to row three and four. Two twists, same thing on the second one. And as you can see, I'm facing these pipe cleaners towards the outside. All six sections of your wreath form should look something like this. When you're done attaching your pipe cleaners, your wreath form should look something like this. Six pipe cleaners on the inside row and 12 on the outside. Before we start attaching our deco mesh, let's go over what we're going to do. I always start from the inside, so if we're starting with this pipe cleaner, we are going to make 10 inch loops going all the way around until we come back to where we started. Now here comes the layered part. We're going to undo our pipe cleaner, attach the deco mesh where we started, and instead of going flat to the outside, what we're going to do is we're going to make 10 inch loops 
once again on the inside row we're going to have double the decomesh now after I'm done with my second circle and I come back to where I started originally that is when I'm going to go flat to the next pipe cleaner and here I'm going to once again make 10 inch loops going all the way around if you're afraid maybe you were making bigger loops on here or something and you may not have enough doing nine inch loops on the outside is just fine because look at the space of the pipe cleaners on the inside row and the space on the pipe cleaners on the outside row so you definitely can make your poofs a little smaller on the outside row same thing as on the inside row we are going to do this twice so we're going to go around once get back to where we started and then go again this once again is going to give us that extra layer and that fullness to get started I'm going to go in about two to three inches collect my deco mesh when I have my tail I'm going to attach it first to the pipe cleaner grabbing a zip tie I'm going to put it underneath row two and attach that tail in place I'm going to go off of our connection about an inch cut off the tail now this ending tail is straightened out and secured in place before we get started on the poofs there are two important things to remember our deco mesh roll needs to be rolling onto the table and number two we are going to keep this all together we're not going to be making poofs like this we are going to keep it nice and tight measure our 10 inches then we're bringing it in and tying it to the next pipe cleaner because when we're going to be making the second row we're going to untie it and connect it because on top of this we still have ribbon so I don't want it to get too poofy measuring my 10 inches I'm done going all the way around and here is where we started now I'm going to push this decomash aside because I want the blue red blue red to alternate so I'm going to measure my 10 inches go to my next pipe cleaner open it up put my decomash in there and I'm going to give it two nice twists and now my pipe cleaners are going to be facing up so I can find them a little later when we need them next 10 inches undo my pipe cleaner put it right inside and next to the other one and now we're going to secure it two nice tight twists and I'm going to do that going all the way around I'm done going around with my second layer for the inside row and look how poofy this is you can see that I have two in each section and it's already starting to fill up beautifully now we're going to go to the outside row where I finished my inside row I'm going to go nice and flat to the outside row I'm going to give it one twist and now I'm going to start making 10 inch loops going all the way around and as I said before you can definitely do nine inches if that's what you desire I'm on the last loop on the outside row now I'm going to layer on that second row but we're not really layering on we're putting it next to our first one because it's going to be easier to open it up I am on my last loop measuring off 12 inches let's open this back up put our tail in close it back up and now we're going to push the tail between rows three and four towards the back because it's the best way to do it the best way to see it grabbing another zip tie I'm going to put the zip tie underneath row three I always count my rows from the inside out there's my tail about an inch from the connection I'm going to cut this off but before I do do you see what I mean that the foil actually slips out of the deco mesh and literally I just cut this a few seconds ago that is why when I'm working with really really foiled deco mesh it's beautiful but definitely choose a method that is continuous not that our deco mesh is all attached we're going to open up our loops working inside out I'm going to open every poof the way I do it is I'll grab the whole poof in hand and I'll start on one side and I kind of feed it through next one I have red and I'm going to have blue because I did put it side by side so here's my next one I got the beginning and I'm feeding it through anything that's stuck on itself it's going to open that up and it's going to puff it out and I'm not sure if this method was done I mean I feel like at this point any possible method has been done by somebody I'm not sure so on this channel I'm going to call it the layered method because we're kind of layering on our deco mesh this is 
so super affordable. If you can get some 10 inch deco mesh on sale wherever you would buy it, this would be very, very economical. And especially for this, I would think that foil deco mesh would work really nicely because the foil hides any imperfections. But look how economical this is. Yes, the foiled deco mesh might be more expensive sometimes, but if you're using only one roll, I think it's worth it. Everything is poofed out and just look at the fullness of this wreath base. And that is using just one roll of foiled 10 inch deco mesh. I'm going to start by preparing my pipe cleaners. I'm using a standard 12 inch pipe cleaner and I'm going to cut it into four inch strips. After I do that, I'm going to do the little V like I usually do. This is just to make it easier for me. There's no really other function than I can grab this and put it straight onto what I need. I got my 10 inch deco mesh by 10 yards. I also have a little laundry basket to the side of my table because as I'm making these little poofs, I'm going to just drop them down. For this wreath, we are going to need 30 10 inch loops. Let's start by bringing our deco mesh together. And see what I mean? It's just a quick little attachment. Two twists. Another thing to consider when you're making your twist because our deco mesh is being rolled onto the table. When I measure my 10 inches off, I grab my pipe cleaner and I go down so I can twist it together at the bottom on this side. This way my pipe cleaner gets attached straight onto my wreath form and it's already set up. It's up the right way and we're ready to roll. So same thing, I'm going to continue and just make 10 inch loops. As you saw, I brought my pipe cleaner straight on top. I'm going to just flatten everything out, two twists, and then off I go. I will be doing this until I get 30 poofs. When you are done, you're going to have something like this. So find your beginning and let's start attaching. Attaching to a wreath form is going to be absolutely easy. We have four metal rows in this wreath form and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on what I call an intersection where this row meets the bar that goes across. Starting on an intersection, I'm going to go to every intersection on the inside row. Second row is going to be in between the intersections all the way around until I go back to where I started. Then on the third row, we're back to the intersections all the way around, just attaching to every intersection. In the fourth row, we're going to actually do two poofs per section. So we're going to do intersection in the middle, intersection in the middle, intersection in the middle going all the way around. Starting on my first intersection, I'm going to first twist it in place and just fold and fold back. Now I'm grabbing a zip tie and I'm going to zip tie that tail in place. I do this in the beginning and at the end. I'm just going to go on every intersection and attach my pipe cleaner. You can work upside down a lot of times when I'm just attaching pipe cleaner, pipe cleaner, pipe cleaner, like in this case, I like to work from the back because that's where you're going to see what you're doing and it's just easier this way. Now I'm attaching my last poof on that first row and as you can see, I'm attaching it where we started. So we have a complete row of deco mesh. Now I'm just moving on and in the second row, I'm going to attach pipe cleaners in the middle. You can definitely hot glue it in place if you are worried about it moving here and there. But when all the deco mesh is on, I don't find that to be a problem because everything gets layered and it just holds in place. So I'm not worried about that. I completed row two and now moving to row three. And here I'm going to go on an intersection once again going all the way around. My third row is done. I'm moving on to row four and I'm going to have two poofs in each section. So there's going to be just one in the middle, one on an intersection, and I'm going to go all the way around. 
I'm on my last poof and I'm going to attach it right on top of where we started the last row and the tail I'm going to zip tie that in place push the tail back so it's out of the way here is the wreath from the back and here is the wreath from the front one roll of decomash you have got to love that A wreath form is in six sections and we're going to put 12 of these petals in each section. Here is how this works. Our deco mesh is 10 inches by 10 yards. 10 yards is 360 inches. Divide that by the 10 inches that we're going to be cutting our deco mesh into. So basically we're going to be making 10 by 10 inches here. And you're going to have 36 petals per roll. We're going to have two rolls. So we should have 72 petals from these two rolls. This will make for a very full wreath here. As for the pipe cleaners, I'm going to cut them into four inch strips. They're usually 12 inches long. So I just fold them like that. And of course, when I'm done, I'm going to fold them into a little V so they are ready to be used. Now it's time to cut our deco mesh into 10 inch strips. I'm going to be using a rotary cutter, but you can use a heating tool or some scissors. Here is my pink deco mesh all cut up. And before I move on to the purple one, I wanted to show you how I store it while I'm cutting it. And as you can see, they're all separate. They're all just in their own little uh, loops, I guess, not touching. And when I pick them up, there's no problem, there's no tangling, there is no fraying, and that is important because before we even make the petals, we don't want any fraying. So every step of the way when making wreaths, we have to be careful with the deco mesh. The purple one is really hard to see against my blue background over here, but I'm just going to continue making my 10 inch little strips and I'll be back so we can make the petals. We are ready to make our little mermaid scales. First things first, I'm going to grab our little piece of deco mesh. I'm going to roll it out so it's still curling in this way. And I'm going to bring it together where the seams are right there and you want the smooth end to be on the sides because that is what's going to go on top. So right here, I'm, I just like to kind of hold it in the center bring it from this side bring it from that side and we're going to make a little bow my supervisor set on my little pipe cleaners now i'm just going to bring a pipe cleaner here i'm going to give it a little twist and then i'm going to put it straight on our wreath form right here now that it's attached to our wreath form i'm going to take one of the tails and fold it back so that it's all folding kind of in and surrounding our wreath. I know right now it looks really, really thin and you can see the wiring, but don't forget we are going to fill this in. Then I'm going to grab the next one. As I said, the cut edges are at top at the bottom. The really nice edging is on the sides and I just kind of put my hand right in the center, bring it from one side, bring it from another, just kind of just just like that just bring it together grab our pipe cleaner here give it a little twist and then we're going to just bring it together in the back and it's going to be pretty short so if you're not comfortable with this definitely just cut the pipe cleaners in half but I like it this way because I'm done with it I locked it in no cutting nothing so this one is going to lay right against this one and then this one we're going to turn inside out and you already have a little pattern happening over here. And I'm just going to go every other pink and lilac, pink and lilac. There you go. In the center, bring it in, bring it in, grab a pipe cleaner here, make it nice and tight, a twist or two, just twisting it in place in the back. There you go. And this section we're going to flip and we're just going to continue going 
and you can already see this beautiful kind of pink and lilac design happening it is going to be so elegant and pretty and then just imagine it with this bow on top it is going to be gorgeous one thing about this wreath to keep in mind that yes it might fray on the edges but we're going to just keep it nice and tight and that's why i stuck to 10 inches is because i wanted to make sure that i have plenty of deco mesh little pieces and that we have 12 per each section so each section is nice and filled at the end when all of our petals are in place it's going to look stunning look at the elegance of this wreath i absolutely love it and the fraying is kind of being held together by that next petal and the next petal and the next petal so we are just going to go ahead and continue doing this all the way around and 12 of these petals Per section let's look at this wreath one more time before we put our bow on and just play around with it if there's anything that's out of place or needs to be untwisted this is the time to do it and just make sure everything's just laying really nicely and smoothly and all going in one direction looking so pretty and elegant Now I'm taking the 21 pipe cleaners that I prepared, fold them in half, cut, and then I'm going to take it and then fold it in a little V. This will be a huge help when we're actually attaching the deco mesh. Let's get started on attaching our deco mesh. This little cutting mat from the Dollar Tree is six inches by eight inches. And since our bubbles are going to be eight inches, I'm not even pulling out my big cutting mat. This one is just fine. So I have my deco mesh, throw it right in the basket and one outside the basket on the other side. Let me show you what I mean. If I were to put the second roll right behind here, it's going to catch. So in order for me to pull them out nice and smooth, I'm going to put the second roll on the outside of the basket. That way it's going to roll out really nicely. Look at that. First things first, let's overlap the edges. Go in about two, two and a half inches and bring it together. Then I'm doing a quick check, making sure that I have everything in my tail so that nothing is pulled out. Let's go over our bubbles. Our bubbles are going to be eight inches in length and we are going to be doing seven bubbles per section. Our wreath form has six sections. That means we're going to have 42 bubbles total. You can either attach your bubbles bubbles to row two, row three, or row two and three. I'm going to put my deco mesh in between row two and three, and I'm going to do it on this crossbar. Grabbing a zip tie, I'm going to go from one side to the other of the crossbar, zip tie that in. With my deco mesh, I went through here and then straightened my tail out to the side and zip tied it in place. You could do another zip tie if you want. Since we started and attached the beginning on bar two, because when we come all the way around, this is going to be a little bit too much to attach it on the same side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it on the crossbar that's on row three. I'm going to be attaching my bubbles to row two. I'm starting right here at zero and I'm going to keep it tight and go to eight. Don't make it too loose because then it's not going to be a true eight inches and you might not have enough at the end. So always keep it tight when you're measuring. Bring it in. I'm putting a pipe cleaner on row two and just putting my deco mesh little bubble right on top. Twist a little bit more, cut off the excess, fold and fold back. Your bubble is taken care of. Next, same thing eight inches grabbing a pipe cleaner going on row two putting my bubble right on top and giving my pipe cleaner a few twists going up about an inch from the connection cut off the excess fold and fold back it's nice and neat and we're going to continue I am done with my first section. Just look at this gorgeousness. 
I love the way using two rolls just overlays. I'm actually not going to be opening these up like I usually do because it's just, it's perfect the way it is. It's so unique, it's stunning. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is only one section. I'm going to go ahead and continue making eight inch little bubbles going all the way around. Before going to the next bubble, I like to just go in and make sure this bubble is overlaid nicely with the two rolls of deco mesh, and that way it's just a perfect little bubble, and off I go. I am on my last bubble, and this deco mesh is so pretty for a nautical wreath. That's actually why I bought it, but ended up getting that picture that worked really perfectly with it. And doing eight inch bubbles going all the way around. This is all I have left from my deco mesh. So just keep that in mind when you are making your bubbles. Going in about three inches. Here is where I started. I'm going to finish off on this little intersection. Now I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with the tail. That crossbar on row three is where I'm going to go. And my zip tie is going to go on one side of this bar and on the other side of that little crossbar. Tighten my zip tie and cut it off. Push it through and you can zip tie it more if you want, but I just wanted to show you Here's the beginning and here is the end. I sometimes do open all the bubbles up, but I also think it depends on the deco mesh that you use. Using two rolls of the 10 inch deco mesh, you reinforce the design kind of twice or the print twice and it seems to work beautifully. Here's a little close up of all the bubbles. As you can see, this is not a see-through wreath. This is a jam packed thick, strong wreath. For this wreath, I'm using 18 pipe cleaners, folding them in half and cutting them. Then I'm going to just fold those in half we're going to create a little V. It just helps me grab them when I'm making the bundles. To make things easier on me, I'm going to cut all three of the deco mesh right on top of each other. So let's get the orange one. Just going to put scissors on there. Then the yellow and the second roll of yellow. Next, I'm going to put something heavy on this side before I cut because if I don't, it's going to go everywhere this way. When I cut my 10 inch strips, the deco mesh stays together and I can just pull it forward and pull this back. I just wanted to mention, look how smoothly this little Dollar Tree rotary cutter is going through three rolls of deco mesh. I mean, smooth and clean. For the green deco mesh roll, I'm going to be cutting 18 inches each because I want this to be on the longer side and I decided to do five of these. For the green petals, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my little roll and I'm going to take kitty corner to kitty corner and stretch it and then find my center, collect it and fold it in half. And the reason we have to do that is because we are dealing with long flower petals. So we need this to show. So I'm going to go ahead and make five of these. The next thing I'm going to do is separate the orange from my yellow. And this one's easy. It's on the inside and I just pull. The fun thing about this wreath is you can use three different colors, as many colors as you want, and just mix and match them and make a fun wreath. Now that our deco mesh is separated, I'm going to grab one of these big clamps. You could grab whatever you have on hand. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do bundles of three. I got my pipe cleaners. I got three pieces of deco mesh. Let's do this. I'm going to take my little piece and as you see, it's rolling towards the inside 
from the table and as it rolls I'm going to take this side and the opposite side the little kitty corner side and bring it together overlapping about two inches then I'm going to fold in this edge touching this tip just like this and this edge that's going to touch this tip and then you have this beautiful petal and I'm just going to clamp it let's do this again my deco mesh is rolling from the table onto my hand I'm going to take one piece put it in the center take the other piece overlap it two inches this way then I'm going to take one side and I'm going to touch it to this end and you're going to be able to see the ending because it's a little thicker obviously so that is what I'm doing and then this edge is going to touch this edge so you're just folding it in just like this let's clamp those together one more we're going to start making them a little quicker to the center overlap about two inches fold in touching one end fold this touching the other end and it's basically making that little wave we're going to take our pipe cleaner put it over our little bundle and then i'm going to squeeze it just like this and at the tip two twists and our little bundle is done that's it same thing we're going to use three of these per bundle overlap overlap about two inches in the center edge to the corner that we have on here edge to the corner we have on the other side and when i mean corner i mean corner of your deco mesh just to clarify that let's clamp it once you get going it goes quite quickly I'm going to grab our pipe cleaner and this is why i love it that it's in the v i know where the center is right away there you go two twists and we have our little petal and now all i'm doing is repetitive work i'm going to continue making my petals three per bundle now it's time for the fun part let's attach our bundles this wreath form is divided into six sections in each section you are going to have four bundles of the yellow and two bundles of the orange the orange bundles are going to go on row one and two and the yellow bundles are going to go on row two and three if you are doing a wreath where you're just combining three different pieces you can just do the row two and three and go all the way around attaching anywhere from five to six in each section but because i'm doing a flower and we want to incorporate different layers i'm just doing the yellow on row two three and orange on row one and two so let's start with the yellow and i'm just going to wrap it around row two and three twist it in the back and just hide that little tip i have my four yellows and as you can see it's kind of loose that's all right that is going to even out at the end for our orange what we want to do is one two orange one two orange here we go one two orange one two orange and while it looks sparse now that's because it's only section number one when it's all on it's going to look great i promise this is half of the wreath all done now i'm going to go ahead and finish attaching the rest of the bundles i attached all my bundles except for one green bundle and my green bundle i'm just sporadically putting them throughout the wreath and i am attaching on row two and three because I did make them a little bit on the longer side I think they're going to be just fine now let's flip because I have the orange and the yellow what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all my orange through the center and pull my yellow out like this one I'm going to pull it back so my orange is on the inside and we do have that effect that we want with the orange here the yellow on the outside
What did you guys think of all those methods? I know we were all over the map when it came to the holidays or the themes for these wreaths, but it was the techniques that I really wanted to focus on just for fun. In the comments below, let me know what is your favorite holiday to make wreaths for or the ones that just bring you joy and happiness. I would love to know. As far as for me, of course, I'm going to say that I love all the season, all the holidays, but it's the challenging ones that I love the most. For example, I did one for working from home or one for a bathroom or just a year-round wreath. Those I enjoy because I have to think outside the box to put them together sometimes. And that is what I love. With that being said, don't forget to subscribe and of course hit the little bell button so you are notified every time a wreath comes out. Thank you so much for being with us and we will see you in our next video. Simba, I think we have to wave bye to everyone. Bye guys. Can you wave? Bye. Okay, let's do a kiss. Mwah.